being uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you being here. Uh, before we actually call the meeting to order, I'm going to have uh, Ms. Harvey do a roll call for us. So we don't know who all we have with us. Uh, is it Alderman? Ms. Harvey? Alderman Carver. Present. Alderman Fisher. Here. Alderman Little. Alderman Wolf. Here. Alderman Davies. Here. Vice Mayor Perkins. Here. Alderman Dodd. Here. All right. It shows that we have a, a quorum. We have uh, all, all missing but uh, Alderman Little, and we wish him have an enjoyable vacation. So at this point in time, if you would please, I will call this meeting to order. We will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence, and Alderman Vaughn will be kind enough to do our, our pledge for us. I mean, I'm sorry, our invitation for us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, and justice for all. Alderman Vaughn. That was funny. The God of creation, the giver of life, the almighty, all wise, all new and all powerful, all seeing, hearing, understanding God. Father God, again, and see your handmade servant, we come before you. For this man, Lord, to come before you again, Father God, to handle these affairs of the city. We pray now, God, that you will be with us in every decision that we make, it will glorify you. We pray, Father God, that you will direct our thoughts, but most of all, direct our hearts. We pray, Father God, for each and every last one will be standing into this meeting tonight, we pray. We ask you that you will please forgive us of all our sins and look beyond all our faults and continue to feel, fulfill our needs. We thank you, Father God, with this pandemic going on all around us. We know that you know best and we know that you got everything in control. We ask you now, Father God, the Lord to be so mean that don't want them to wear a mask, Father God. We pray that you would trust your heart and just try to save somebody else's life. Father, we just thank you so much for the privilege that you give us to live on this earth. We thank you for being clothed in our right mind with activity of our limbs and the use of all our organs. We thank you for the way you made us because you didn't have to make us this way. And we just thank you so much because First John 3 and 1 says, see what love the Father given us, that we all be called children of God, and so we are. Father, we glorify you, magnify your holy name because of who you are and what you are. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. All right. Thank you again so much. And I was not quite as clear as I should have been. This is the recess meeting of Tuesday, the 21st of 2020. So I should have said that at the outset, just to be clear for Facebook and for uh, the record. But all right. So our first order of business will be to approve the official agenda, including some items. And I will go down the rolls to see who might have some uh, some changes to the agenda or to the items, and I will start with uh, Alderman Vaughn. We'll do a little backward again this time around. So, um, Alderman Vaughn, do you have any changes to the agenda with consented items? No, ma'am. All right. Vice Mayor Perkins, do you have any changes? No, ma'am, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Beatty, do you have any changes? No, ma'am. Thank All you. All right. Alderman Walker. No, ma'am. No changes. All right. Thank you. We know Alderman Lewis is uh, absent. Alderman Sister. No, ma'am. Okay. And Alderman Carver, any changes to the agenda? No, ma'am. All right. So uh, I need a motion with, uh, for the approval of the official agenda with the consented items as displayed on the agenda. Approved. I have a motion from Alderman Vaughn for approval. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Beatty. All right. And uh, also, again, I should have said each, each vote will be a roll call vote because we do have people who are attending by video and by phone. So um, if you would, please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Parker. Yay. Alderman Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Bates. Yay. Yay. Um, yes. All right, it is unanimous. We have an agenda with consented items, and I will now read those consented items for the record. First item is under code enforcement. We have consideration of calling for a public hearing under Mississippi Code Annotated 21-1911 to determine whether the properties located at 1249 Mississippi Highway 182 West, 310 Lindbergh Boulevard, 
307 West Main Street, 321 Price Street, and 722 Vine Street are ministers to the public health, safety, and welfare of the community. Under planning, we have A, consideration of sole applicant, Dr. George Ford, for the appointment to the vacancy in Ward 1, and Charlotte Board of Adjustments and Appeals for a full four-year term set to expire on June the 30th, 2024. Under planning, item D is consideration of the approval of the memorandum of agreement with the Historic Preservation Division, Mississippi Department of Archives and History, MDAH, to move and preserve the historic Gillespie Jackson House located currently on 701 Louisville Street with parcel number 102G-00-036.00 and to receive $20,000 through the Certified Local Government CLG Grant Program. Under engineering, item one is consideration of acceptance of the lower bid of $988,747.80 for the 2020 Street Improvement Project from Falcon Contracting Company, Inc., and authorizing the mayor to execute a contract. Under finance and administration, item two is acceptance of the June 2020 financial statements. Under human resources, we have request authorization to hire Jonathan Lindsay, Dylan Rockwell, and Mark Quandrick. Starks as entry-level firefighters in the Starkville Fire Department. Two is request authorization to hire Quentin Alexander as an entry-level police officer and Moultrie B. Lacey as a certified police officer in the Starkville Police Department. Three, request authorization to hire Thomas Davis as a sewer operator in the Starkville Utilities Department. Four is request authorization to hire Malcolm Collins as a sewer maintenance worker in the Starkville Utilities Department. Five, request authorization to hire Luke Burnett as a sewer inspector in the Starkville Utilities Department. Six is request authorization to hire two part-time customer service representatives in the Startwell Utilities Department. Under information technology, we have one request approval of an agreement with an addendum with Securamax required to participate in a 30-day test and evaluation of a new police body camera system. Under parks, we have request authorization for an RFP for cornerstone sports field lighting, eight baseball softball fields, 225 feet, Two, two baseball fields, 250 feet, one t-ball arena, uh, one t-ball area, two fields. Alternate number one includes two baseball softball fields for 225 feet, and alternate number two is a per field cost for automated sports broadcasting camera system for a 225 foot and 250 foot field. Number two, request approval of the RFP committee to pre to preview the. I'm sorry, to review the Cornerstone Lighting RFP and to provide a recommendation on the system to the mayor and board of aldermen with the committee to consist of Alderman Moore, Alderman Moore for Jason Walker, Park Athletic Supervisor Nick Callahan, and City Engineer Edward Kemp. And under utilities, number one, request authorization to accept the lowest and best bid from Consolidated Pipe and Supply to purchase a trench box assembly set in the amount of $8,790. And that concludes the consent agenda items. Thank you, Mayor. My pleasure. All right. Um, announcements and comments. Uh, I do want to make a couple of announcements this week. One is to remind everyone about the census. Please, please, if you have not filled out the census report, please do so. It is incredibly important for the city and for the county and for actually for the state of Mississippi to be perfectly frank because that a large in large part is where we get um, funding from the federal government. So for those of you who have vast contacts, whether it's through your social organizations or your church, if you would please recommend to those who lead those organizations that they encourage the membership to um, fill out the census if they have not already done so. And it is very, very easy to do. So please consider doing that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to make sure that we talked about and I've been getting uh, emails and information about is, is uh, regular and up-to-date data on the number of cases in Oshawa County and at the hospital. And so I want to refer everyone to OCH.org and under their COVID heading, it gives out uh, very good detailed information on what the, what the capacity of the hospital is, how many beds are available and the number of cases that they're dealing with. So. Um, I recommend that highly to those who have an interest in knowing exactly um, what's going on with the hospital and in Oxford Hall. Uh, and last but not least, but incredibly important, I know to everyone, is we will be at the end of this month, before we have our next board meeting, which will be August the 4th, we will be bringing our furloughed employees back at the end of the month. They will report to work on August the 3rd, which is the first Monday. 
And at that point in time, we will go back to two day a week pickup for our sanitation. We will not be going back to picking up curbside recycling at this point. We want to be reevaluating or evaluating that program during our budget session this year for our 2020-2021 uh, budget cycle. And so that will not be recurring, but we will be going back to two-day a week pickup for um, trash and for um, our garbage pickup. So, um, and aside from that, I have nothing else. Alderman Carver, do you have anything you'd like to say from a citizen, from a comment standpoint? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Um, on the system. I would like to just um, echo what you said about the terrific statistics that OCH has on their website right now. They started that back um, mid-June, probably, and it's a really good a, a really good resource for you to be able to see what's there, how those numbers are moving up and down. The Mississippi Department of Health has also expanded what they are reporting. And if you dig down into their website, you'll find that they have some county-specific information that's also quite good. One of the things that they do is they have a ranking of counties by um, looking at how, how the numbers are changing within that county, uh, caseloads, that sort of thing. And Occupy County had been moving up. We had not made that top 23 list where the governor was mandating special um, restrictions, but we, we were not very far behind that. However, in the last week to 10 days, our numbers have come back down. And so we're now back down in the middle or lower half of, of the pack of um, 82 counties. So um, thank you. Everybody who has worn a mask, I think you've made a difference already. Okay. Um, Alden Walker. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, I just wanted to commend you, Mayor, and the, the park staff uh, for a couple weekends ago bringing in Jeffrey Simmons football tournament when it looked like the city had lost a baseball tournament schedule that week due to inclement weather. Um, and thank you for your leadership. Um, from, from what I saw from Mr. Simmons is that that came together at the last minute being moved from Knoxby and uh, I appreciate you and the, and the park stepping up, being flexible um, to, to allow us to be able to put on what appeared to be a, a fantastic event uh, by Mr. Jeffrey Simmons and Starville's own A.J. Brown and many other uh, Hell State players uh, and former Starville High School players and others uh, to put on what was a great event. And we look forward to being able to have more of that type of programming. Um, and again, just appreciate uh, you uh, and the parks for being flexible and a allowing us to, to bring that to Starville like it was a great event. So thank you. Thank you very much, Alderman. And I was very excited, I must say. And uh, Mr. DeCoyle was very uh, receptive as well. I heard from uh, Larry Mullins, who has, of course, a financial planner here downtown. And he indicated to me that, uh, that Mr. Simmons had been removed from the Knoxville County opportunity. And so um, could we work something out? And I said, absolutely, unless it just is prohibitive. And, and it was not. So. Thank you to the park staff as well, and thank you, Alderman Walker. And Alderman Vaughn came out and, and met with him, and I think he's very excited to consider us again next year, which is which is wonderful. So I, I look forward to us doing many more of those kinds of things and being able to to manage those things with our with our wonderful park staff and our parks. So thank you, Alderman Walker. Alderman Beatty. Mayor, no, glad to keep talking up every time I need to talk in this. You and I had had, had talked some. Um, about this, that it, it's I've been, become concerned, and it's been brought to my attention that as students start to come in, um, and you know, as we approach the school at Mississippi State, that our, our bars are being frequented, um, in particular in cotton district places like that, and that um, there's not any social distancing going on, there's not any mask wearing going on. And um, I'm, I'm concerned that, that um, and maybe I'm overstating, I don't think I'm overstating this, but I'm concerned that um, as this starts to happen, we're going to see increased cases potentially of the COVID um, virus in, in, in the community start because of, of this, this type of activity. Um, I noticed that, that uh, I was reading Oxford Eagle today that, that uh, Oxford has put a 10 p.m. Um, closure time on their bars 
in restaurants. They can stay open afterwards. They just have to have it has to be takeout. They can't have there won't be any uh, being inside or anything like that. And I wondered, do we need to discuss that or talk about that? And and, and again, Sunday in, in paper, um, our state health officer, Dr. Dobbs, had, had indicated that that the pathway to avoid infection is to wear masks that at least six feet apart from all the people in board groups. And so all three of those, none of those three things are being, are, are being um, observed or uh, done by people who are going into bars at night. And and I just, I, I don't know, um, as, as when, when the student body population comes back and this, you know, this type of activity goes on every night, I mean, um, we certainly will have, I know today that Mississippi had 45,000 plus cases of COVID, of which 30,000 people are presumed to be, you know, you know, guys have gotten well over, but um, 1,650 new cases today, and now well, that's a record or not, but we're, Mississippi in, in, as a state, maybe not here, but as a state, we're not declining, we're going up. And um, college towns with lots of young people coming in, um, had the potential to have, have an issue with that. And I, I, I didn't know whether we wanted to discuss it, but something that, that, um, that the board feel that's important to talk about. I mean, I, there again, I don't think we should necessarily copy everything Oxford does, but I think they had some situations up there that got serious enough that they felt it was necessary to, to enact that. And it, I feel like it's, it's, uh, incumbent on us probably because we're a college town, very similar size, and our, our two schools are about the same, and that kind of stuff that, that, um, you know that stuff could could uh, could happen here if we get away from us here. And once we start getting negative feed information about the number of cases that are that, that you know they're increasing here, it's going it's the cat's out of bag. And it's all you know we're going it's already gotten away from us or potentially. So I mean I, I thought I thought I'd bring that up. Okay, all right. Well, I certainly think that it's something. This will be something we'll be discussing. I feel sure for a while. So my my default position would be to allow the police department to. Um, observe because i don't find myself in the cotton district after 10 o'clock um to observe the goings on in the in the cotton district and if there are issues that we need to take uh action on or to address um if you would be so kind as to bring that back to us and let us with that additional information um take some sort of or have further discussion and then potentially take some action <laughs> Well, and we, yeah, and we have two weeks to our, to our next board meeting. It perhaps will be something you can brief us on at the work session. But if something appears to be necessary before we reach that point, please feel free to bring it to us. Okay. All right. Thank you. Hey, one well, short thing. I just noticed the other night, I drove probably eight o'clock. It was, it was throughout the University of Boulder, it was rocking pretty good, which is normal. It's what it's supposed, it's supposed to do. It. It's supposed to do it anyway. And if we, you know, but um, the only people I noticed. In, in three or four or four or five bars in there that were in masks with the, with the bouncers, the people that were checking the IDs and letting people walk up on the, the front porch of these places. And, and with, with the exception of that, I didn't see anybody with a mask on. And I didn't see anybody social distancing. And so that, in time, repeating enough will, will be to give us potential help having a problem here, I think. You weren't out there mingling with them. I was not. I, I was driving. <laughs> I was, I was driving through, come back from campus to, to, uh, toward my house, but, uh, but it's, it's something that uh, I think that, that we certainly, by next meeting, need to have some information on and, and discuss. And Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bates. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yes, ma'am. Mayor, I was not intending to say anything. Let me I say very, very briefly, I agree with what you just said about, and in response to the gentleman from five, uh, we already have a mechanism in place. I don't think we need to really have much discussion of any we just need to enforce it as you mentioned you can have the police uh department to observe that if in fact that you deem that may be necessary and proper so we have a great enforcement to have the penalty provision so that is the purpose of that for non-compliance so you know i, I think as you mentioned if you can have the police department if you deem that to be necessary and proper and then you can just report back to us so you know if you deem that is necessary then we we got a fine up to um, up, up to a thousand dollars and up to ninety days in jail plus the cost of prosecution. That will be a strong deterrent if, in fact, that is the thing necessary. I yield the floor, Mayor. Thank you. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Alderman Barnes? Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, I just got one. Just, just one of the, it's, uh, as I was going to reflect on our employees that being hired that they want to start working see how we bring all our employees back off the of furlough. I just want to know if our minutes will reflect that. They will now? Like a note of that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's what we mentioned at the work session, so yeah. I just want to make sure, make sure that that's the okay. case. Excuse me, Mayor, may I be recognized? Alderman Walker, certainly. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I agree with what Alderman Beatty and Alderman uh, Perkins had to say. I would like, if we're going to monitor, there, there are definitely um, additional uh, bars and restaurants in town where that, that are outside of the cotton district. But I think if we're going to be taking these two weeks to monitor that we need to look at the, the bars and restaurants on main street and on highway 182, Martin Luther King drive and everywhere else in town, uh, where we might have students or others that would congregate, especially in the, uh, in, in the bar restaurant scene. And if we're going to be serious, we need to make sure that, that we are, looking at data and have the, the police mechanism of the, the officers to uh, observe and then act as necessary. Thank you. Absolutely. We, I appreciate that. And we won't be arbitrary in how we do that. We will observe all of the, all the locations that would be subject to that kind of close proximity. So. My, my, uh, my contention is not to, to single out the Cotton District, but just to say that I had driven through there and that's an observation I'd made of that area. Um, um, to our camp, uh, Councilor, do I do we have a in, in our ordinance? Does it the, the social distancing? Do we have is that part of our language in our or is it just the, the, the thing that we put into place when we institute the mask wearing? Does it also have the, the mandatory social social distancing in that? It, it does in twofold ways. Number one, it's in the resolution, and number two, the resolution points back and adopts to all adopts all the governor's orders right. relating to restaurants and bars, and that language is in there too. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, if there's nothing else, then we will go to citizens' comments. This is an opportunity for anyone to come forward. You have three minutes. This is not a time when the board responds. There's not a back and forth to this normally, but you have three minutes to give us any idea about uh, what you may be considering or what you think it's important for us to know. So, Mr. Kerr, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Adam Donald. I'm um the uh citizens um the uh, it to the point where if it, it didn't allow people to press and for the mental health uh part of it uh, uh we have people that bipolar uh, psychotic, um, talking about death 24 7, that, that's not good for being. Uh, it could be even making trip. Uh, if we can, uh, try to do some targets to try to care about you, uh, over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And over. wishing to speak under citizens comment anyone else all right seeing none i will close it as citizens comment we have no public appearances this evening we do have one public i'm sorry we have two public hearings uh this is our second public hearing with consideration of the adoption of the temporary leisure and entertainment district ordinance for the city of starkville um and this is the um temporary um uh, they used to call it Go Cup. It's not really actually that. But in our packet should have been the map and the the uh, description, the narrative style description of the boundaries. 
and then the uh, ordinance that goes with that. So um, anything from the board. Uh, Alderman Carver, anything you'd like to say about this? Uh, main thing I have, I think I'm looking on the section, there's a word that says that this is uh, triggered by a massive reduction in sales tax, and I don't think that's uh, accurate at the time. What was our latest sales tax figures for the last month? Uh, our sales tax was up 3%, but our food and beverage was down 30%. So it came in at 30. What was, uh, yeah, I just, I don't think that's the premise for, for doing this. And then the second, the, the second, I guess I'm looking at the section, uh, most of it's going to hinder on public safety and the police force. And I would, I guess if I can ask the police, uh, chief, if he's there to step up and just make sure it says under section seven, um, just if he's got, does he have the adequate staffing to, you know, some of these are 12 to 13 hour days of, uh, of additional policing so if he's got the uh, police force ready to do this so that's my question okay the chief is coming to the microphone now you have the staffing to to handle this ordinance yes sir. okay the answer is yes alderman carver well he has to adhere, uh, hire any additional personnel for the 12-hour shift of just um measuring the Leisure district. Uh, I do not anticipate that to add to staff on the call and report it for the street. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alderman McCarver. Alderman Sister. I'd like to um, address a couple of the things that Alderman Carver had also brought up. Um, one is the idea of our sales taxes that were up um, this last um, distribution that came from the city, but as we all know, one month is not a trend to make. Um, the two months before that, they were down um, $70,000 the first month, $85,000 the month before. We are still down about $125,000 overall in sales tax collections over this three-month period that we tend to think of as COVID-related. Um, most of the slippage in sales tax did occur in restaurants, and hotels and restaurants is by far the bigger um, raw number than, than hotels, but that's where the, the slippage occurred. And, and as far as the policing part of it goes, I think that this ordinance, um, anything that would have been a problem before will continue to be a problem um, in terms of someone who's unruly or um, not, not following current regulations about being outside with, uh, or just, just being outside. Um, so this really just, just allows people to leave a shop with something, uh, with a beverage. It's, it's the only real difference between what we have done in the past and what we are going to be doing under this temporary entertainment and leisure district. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Sister. Uh, Alderman Walker. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I'm certainly in support of this ordinance, and I think it's going to, to be an overall a good thing, especially in the times that we're in right now. I would add that I do think that uh, once this becomes, if it becomes adopted, in that areas where the district is ending, we need to, uh, where it says that there's going to be litter baskets right outside of each venue, um, I do think it's uh, Im imperative for us to help educate uh, people that don't walk around with that map. Um, to be able to have that as part of an app that's downloaded so they know, but physically when you're walking, um, that there's some visual cue, whether that be uh, a little bit of signage that might be temporary in nature, um, along with anything related to a kiosk or something that lets people know that that now when you're going north on Nash Street, you're out of the district and you need to dispose of your uh, paper cup. And I would, I'm all for the resolution as is, a personal opinion, I would strike styrofoam. But in any case, that that's the point that you will dispose of your cup prior to, to walking. Um, and I think if we do that to help educate uh, the people, I think we'll, one, hopefully reduce the amount of litter that we're seeing um, and uh, make sure that people that are trying to do the right thing um, and dispose of them don't walk into areas where they're not supposed to be. And that people that uh, extend beyond those boundaries or bring in drinks from their home into those boundaries um, I fully expect uh, Chief Ballard and the police officers 
uh, to act according to, to the rule and a first try to educate people. And then if they're breaking that rule um, to, to give them a citation for doing such. And I believe that if we uh, were given a pretty big carrot, but I believe if we also carry a little bit of a, uh, an enforcement stick on this, I think we will hopefully eliminate any transgressions right at the beginning and let everybody know that uh, this is something that could, could, could be taken away. And if uh, the system becomes abused, then it becomes taken away. Um, but at the same time, a little bit of enforcement, uh, I think will go a long ways in making this a successful endeavor. And while it may not be the premise, it's certainly the hope uh, that it would allow more flexibility for those restaurants uh, along these within the district to be able to increase their food sales and, and beverage sales. And uh, that's in everyone's best interest if that happens. So I'm, I'm very hopeful that this will uh, uh, be a nice fabric for the community. But at the same time, it has the potential uh, to uh, be an economic benefit uh, for the 2% sales uh, at the restaurants and, and, and bars. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Walker. Alderman Beatty? No, Mayor, thank you. All right, thank you. Vice Mayor Perkins? No comments, Mayor, thank you. Thank you, sir. Alderman Vaughn? No comments, Mayor. All right, thank you. All right, I need to open this as a public hearing. I need to real quick, Mayor. Uh, yes. Just want to clarify one point, board. I've, I've heard the word temporary a couple times. There's no automatic repealer in the uh, ordinance as it stands right now, so it'll be on the books until the board or if the board ever rescinds it. Thank you, Mr. All right, uh, I will open this as a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak for or against, now would be your opportunity. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Mr. Turner. Uh, uh, my name is Adam. Uh, 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 we're stressed in the uh, chaos that's going on. Uh, people are just that to be given trying to get outside the top. But maybe we can try here, and it's a long time here. Uh, you know, the argument to speak to the public on our uh, private, we're doing this. Maybe it'll help with our, uh, all the credit and the chaos that's going on of our country. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, if yeah, they hear from the audience, uh, uh, maybe it'll help, you know, but uh, uh, I have the whole people that don't know what's up. Thanks, Mr. Turner. Anyone else? Anyone else? Just four more against. All right, seeing none, I will close it as a public hearing. Um, let's see really quickly if there's anything else anyone wishes to say, and then we will have it for a vote. Alderman Carver, anything from you? Uh, again, just staffing issues and my concerns. I think what you're doing is just, you know, in the last two measures alone, you're asking for more uh, policing and the police to be monitoring bars, restaurants, and now outdoor venues and entertainment districts. And so, uh, you know, drinking is not typically done with a mask on. So you're, at, you're you know, basically enabling individuals to stand. And uh, I think we all know that this can create situations. If it wasn't a COVID related uh, time that uh, we would almost encourage social gatherings. And so you're going to have that naturally. I think over time we'll see the police chief come back to us and say, uh, you know, it's pretty tough. That's, that's a lot of uh, additional measures put in tonight. And uh, the second, I think you'll see a conglomeration of restaurant owners. I'm starting to get a lot of calls uh, from restaurant owners lately that the last message they'll pass on masks, they're really starting to see a downtick of, um, you know, restaurant patrons. People are going to say, hey, I'm just not going to go out. I'm not going to support that. So um, you'll see those two things, I think, in time. Uh, you'll see a restaurant association possibly come before us in the next couple of meetings and go, you know, we've got to have some type of relief. But um, there is some middle ground somewhere. But again, I won't support this tonight. I just think it creates an environment that encourages outdoor gatherings. And unless somebody's walking around with a six-foot yardstick, you're going to always have college kids when they get here. They're going to social, you know, socially gather uh, closer than six feet. They're doing it probably from their hometowns, wherever they're coming from. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of issues when you mix alcohol and police. Um, uh, you'll, you'll see you'll see issues come over, but I'm going to vote against it tonight. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Alderman Carver. 
Well, Mr. Sir, can you start with me? No, I'll, I'll just make the official motion that we uh, adopt this as presented. Okay, I have a motion from Alderman Fistrunk. And while we while we we'll move on to Alderman Walker in a second, uh, do I have a second from anyone? I'll second. Lane to be added to this the the the, the, the guidelines for which. You know, with, with mask wearing, social distancing stuff be part of the, I mean, it would be, but I mean, I mean, is that something we need to include in the? I don't think we need to include. This is an ordinance and the other is a resolution that would be, that would be different and if times change. I mean, it, it would be difficult to write and draft that on the fly because there's going to be a lot of different components to this. I mean, people perhaps standing in doorways as opposed to standing in the middle of the street as opposed to standing on private property if they leave. And so to write from all for all of those instances may be a difficult task on the fly. Uh, I will say that the resolution that the city has in effect and the governor's orders that the city have in effect, they are fully in effect and enforceable by the Starkville Police Department. And so as a matter of law, I don't think anything else needs to be written. Uh, okay, I do have a second from Alderman Beatty. All right, uh, Alderman Sister, anything further? No, thank you. Walker? No, ma'am. All right, thank you. Alderman Beatty, anything further? All right. Vice Mayor Perkins? No, ma'am, Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Vaughn? No, ma'am, ma'am. All right, thank you. All right, hearing no further discussion, I have a motion and a second. If you would, please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver? Nay. Alderman Fishcock. Aye. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Davies. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Nay. Alderman Vaughn. Nay. All right, and that look what we have. We have a tie, and I get to break it. All right. Um, I will vote in favor of the ordinance. So by a vote of four to three, motion carries. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to the first public hearing on amending the City of Starkville Code of Ordinances. This is a housekeeping matter, which um, I had mentioned to everyone at the work session and had mentioned before. This this is to allow our um, ordinances, our code, to come into compliance with the um, changes that we made to our assembly, assembly, our First Amendment policy, if you will, our special event policy. Um, and so that is, as it's intended at this point in time, again, housekeeping only. Um, before I open it to the public hearing, I'll ask for any comments by board. on anything from you? No, ma'am. All right, Vice Mayor Perkins? No, ma'am. Thank you. Alderman Beatty? No, ma'am. Thank you. All right, Alderman Walker? No, ma'am. Alderman Fistrunk? Nothing, thank you. Alderman Carver? Uh, the only question I have is on the Division Two Permit, uh, Section 82-66. The last line says First Amendment Assembly's policy with approval of the mayor or the Starkville Board of Aldermen. Does that not need to be listed in mayor and Starkville Board of Aldermen? Uh, Mr. Latterman is going to speak to that, Alderman Carver. Alderman Carver, we worked on that language today to further amend it. And what we're going to do is after the Board of Aldermen, we're going to put a comma and say, as the case may be. Because remember, the mayor now has authority to approve special events up to $5,000. So that's the right. only thing the mayor can approve unilaterally. Everything else would come before the board. Does that need to be changed before we vote on it? We're not voting on yeah. it tonight. It is, it's going to come back in a clean draft on August 4th. So you're right. The answer is yes, it does need to be changed, but we aren't voting on it tonight. We'll be voting on it at the next board meeting. So we will get that cleaned up and to you for the next board meeting. I understand. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, I will open it as a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter now will be the opportunity. Anyone? Mr. Turner, you're gonna have a you can have a nice night here. Oh, my name is Adam Turner. On the first amendment, uh let me be because uh, a lot of unrest uh, going on. And people that want to be disrupted, but not all they need is if we can not do it. They will have let us be careful or uh, um, be flat situation and that situation. People uh, will be very uneven about that. And the only thing they want is if we can not do it, just be disrupted. 
Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Anyone else wishing to speak to this matter? Anyone else, either for or against? All right, seeing none, I will close it as a public hearing, and we will be taking this matter up at our next board meeting, which time it will come up for a vote and for the, the second public hearing and then, and then for a vote. So uh, the next one more question. One more question. Mr. Carver, go ahead. Yes, thank you. This is more for the city attorney. Uh, it's called the Section 82-62 Dispersal of Activity. Uh, should have asked you privately before the meeting, but you know, basically, individuals absurdity to me that they block interstate highways and things like that. Um, you know, block and travel down. It says that, um, are they allowed to do this? Basically, it said it shall be un unlawful for any person, uh, you know, to refuse such direction to move by a police officer. But can they can they even block a street in the city of Starville? If it's an approved blockage in a special event permit or a first assemblies parade permit and that yep. blockage is approved by the city, if it's not approved by the city, then the police would have enforcement power to clear that street. Thank you. I yield. Thank you, Mr. Charles. All right, if there's nothing else on that matter, then we will go under mayor's business. We have a video interview from Mr. Brandon Doherty. And just as, as background, we, are, uh, we have been uh, discussing a new parks and recreation director. We have interviewed several people and it was open and fulfilled. And uh, at one point in time, Mr. Doherty had provided us with uh, his resume or his uh, application for this, and then he withdrew it, so we never had a chance to actually interview him during our initial process. And as we came back around uh, and offered the job to someone else and they decided against accepting the job, Mr. Doherty resubmitted, and we had um, looked at his resume, which was quite impressive, and he was interested in coming into town, and so as a uh, full background, he has met individually and on separate occasions with the alderman with the exception of alderman carter who was unavailable and so i had asked mr darty if he would be kind enough to be available to us this evening for alderman carver's or anyone else's further questions if they had any so um alderman carver this one's especially for you um matt do we have mr darty up okay um he should be just Mr. Doherty, are you with us? I am, ma'am. I am, ma'am. I am, ma'am. Okay. 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 We've got some pretty serious background noise. How are we doing? Now? We need some music. Okay. We need some music. Mr. Doherty, did you hear? I believe I I did. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, all right, so um, that's an interesting sound behind you. Um, all right, so we appreciate you being with us. Is that me echoing or is that your feedback? Okay. Um, so we appreciate you having come down and visited with all of us. And Oliver Carver is not here visually, but he is uh, on the line. And so uh, what I thought I would do is offer. Um, you an opportunity to uh, chat with the board members who are on, and we're miss we have everyone except all of them little. And so, if you would like to say anything to those of us who are who are here and who you met with, and, and then Alderman Carver as well, you are welcome to do so. And uh, if not, you certainly don't have to. I'm, I will pass it along to uh, Alderman Carver, and we'll go down the line just to check and see if anyone has any further follow up questions. So, Mr. Doherty. Mr. Doherty? Yep, yeah, still slow on the uh, uh came down, had a great visit with all the aldermen and yourself, Mayor. Um, I really appreciate the time that you uh, What a great time it is and uh, a very great opportunity for me. So um, just kind of look forward to see if there's any questions from the group. Okay, all right. Well, we'll start. Alderman Carver, we'll start with you. Do you, uh, do you have any questions for Mr. Doherty? Alderman Carver? Alderman Carver? Yeah. You still there? Can you, you hear me now? Yeah, we yes, got you now. Do you, have, oh, do you have any questions just, for Mr. Doherty? No, I was just saying, other than what I've read through the read through about you i look forward to working for uh working with you and uh look forward to meeting you here in the near future if uh, the boat passes tonight so thank you 
All right, thank you, Alderman Carver. Alderman Sistro. No, I, I'd just like to say that I, I was one of the people who actually got to meet um, Mr. Doherty and um, was very, very impressed with his background, with his uh, approach toward management, his strength in financial management of his department, and um, his willingness to come down here and visit with us and see us in person. Um, so I, I was, I was most impressed and um, very, very looking forward to how this vote goes tonight. Okay, thank you. And I can say uh, I spoke with Alderman Little, though he is not with us tonight. He was also uh, very impressed and enjoyed visiting with uh, Mr. Doherty. So I can at least say that about um, about his visit with you as well. Uh, Alderman Walker. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Doherty, I certainly enjoyed meeting with you and uh, going over uh, the city of Starville Parks and how you uh, will be able to help us with there. And um, very much look forward to for you to come through and, and mayor, I know uh, we're still going around, but I will make the motion that we hire Mr. Dotary uh, to take over the parks and director position. All right. Thank you, Alderman Walker. I have a motion to hire Mr. Doherty. Um, and I, can, can I make a friendly amendment, Alderman Walker, to make that with an annual salary of $75,000 and a start date with the first day in the pay period beginning August 14th? Yes, ma'am. That's fine. I would say uh, the as as in the in the packet and with that date is fine with me. Okay, so I have a motion as as with a friendly amendment uh, noted. Do I have a second? I'll second. I, I heard Alderman sister drunk first, Alderman Beatty. So all right. So we have uh, Alderman Walker. Anything further? No, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Alderman Beatty. You had a good uh, interview with uh, time uh, speaking with Mr. Doherty and. Uh, he is uh, going to do a great job for Steve Star. We'll and look forward to working with him. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Perkins. Well, Mayor, uh, very briefly, I just want to tell the uh, gentleman uh, I, I enjoy meeting with him and looking forward to working with him. Thank you, sir. Alderman Bone. Thank you, Mr. Daughter, for coming as far to visit us. And I thank you for the time that we did spend together. Because we spent about 45 minutes together. And I thank you so much. And looking forward to working with you when we get here. Thank you, Alderman Bone. All right, I have a motion and a second without any further discussion. If you would please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Colbert. Yay. Alderman Fishcock. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Bates. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Mark. Yay. All right, it is unanimous. Mr. Doherty, we will look forward to your. Arrival. So thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank you very much. I look forward to being part of the team. Great. Alrighty. Mayor, may I be recognized? Alderman Walker, certainly. Yes, ma'am. Uh, due to the, the board's action of hiring Mr. Doherty to be the Parks and Recreation um, Director, I would like uh, the board to consider uh, a motion that was passed tonight establishing the, the RFP review board for the lighting at Cornerstone Park. I would recommend that uh, that we add Mr. Doherty to that group as well. Uh, so he is aware of all that. And I believe that the RFP won't come in probably until the end of August. Um, and so he should be on board to, to be able to, to take part in that. Okay, I think that's an excellent suggestion. Uh, would you like to make a, is that a motion to that effect? I know we don't like to add things at the table, but yes, ma'am, I would like to, if we can, just amend adding his name to that motion that was previously previously passed. And if we need to do that as a completely separate motion, that's that's fine. Okay. All right. And I see uh, Mr. DeQuilla has stood, has, is standing, and I think probably would, would like to say something. So hang on just a second. Mr. DeQuilla, do you have something? I just to want to be clear about that date. It's going to be August. It'll be August 20th is the date that the RFP will Okay, so it'll be plenty of time. All right, yeah, the RFPs will be coming in on the 20th, so the 14th arrival from Mr. Doherty will work just fine. So um, I have a motion Mayor. from Alden. I'm sorry, Alden Carver, is that you? I'm just going to have a comment um, after the motion. Okay, all right, so I have a motion from Alderman Walker to add Mr. Doherty to the RFP committee to uh, review the cornerstone lighting and providing a recommendation to the mayor and board. Is that your motion, Alderman Walker? Yes, ma'am. All right, do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Alderman Fistrunk. All right. Um, discussion, Alderman Carver. 
Well, mine's uh, offhanded a little bit, but I just want to say publicly thank you to Mr. Dick Willis for what he's done in the, as the interim. I enjoy getting to meet him uh, actually on the field a few nights and working with the young girl softball program. But um, just again, thank you for everything that you've done and, and with everything going on. It's a uh, uh, trying time being interim, but I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. All right, thank you, Alderman Carver. That's uh, that is echoed by all of us. Mr. DeCula has stepped up in a way he didn't necessarily have to, and he's going to be with us for a while longer as Cornerstone moves along. So we certainly do appreciate that. Alderman Citron. Nothing. Thanks. All right. Alderman Walker. No, ma'am. All right. Alderman Beatty. No, ma'am. Thank you. Vice Perkins. No, ma'am. Mayor, thank you. Alderman Vaughn. No, ma'am. Mayor. All right. Here, um, seeing no further discussion, if you would, uh, Ms. Harden, would you answer yay or would you uh, ask the board to answer yay or nay as you call their name? Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Davis. Yay. 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 All right. It is unanimous. Thank you so much. All right, so, uh, let's see. Next item on our agenda is going to be um, under plan. We have consideration of uh, C, final plat 20-01 is request for a final plat approval for subdividing and reconfiguring several lots into four lots located north of the intersection of University Drive and Page Avenue in a P5U zone district with parcel numbers. Lots of parcel numbers. Including an encroachment agreement and maintenance agreement for pedestrian bridges associated with Vista development and authorization of the mayor to sign on the city's behalf. And I'm going to go to Mr. Latimer first just to verify that he is comfortable with all of those agreements and they meet the legal specifications. Yes, ma'am. We did we made two changes today and board one of the changes is in condition number one. We changed the word plan to plat. So instead of it saying final plan, it should say and will say final plat. Second thing we did is the, encro the encroachment agreement in your packet did not have the encroach encroachments written in that first underlying paragraph. They are in there now. And it also has an attachment, Exhibit A, which shows the encroachments, which shows the pedestrian bridges that are going to encroach on Camp Avenue. And all those That's correct. All right. Thank so you, uh, we start with uh, Dr. Kim. Are you going to present this? Yes, um, the applicant is requesting uh, to sub subdivide the 7.34 acres into four lots. Uh, all improvements are almost done. Uh, Camp Avenue, North Page Avenue, and Vista Avenue have been uh, constructed and will be dedicated to the city. Electrical, water, and sanitary uh, service will be provided by Starfield Utilities. Uh, this is the proposed final uh, plat. And this is the some of the details where the lot one through four are lo located and uh, where the loads are located. And especially, uh, I'm showing here that the pedestrian bridge locations uh, that is related to the uh, agreement tonight. This is the details of the uh, location of pedestrian bridge and the relationships between the uh, building 2000 and 4000 and building 2000 and 3000. Preliminary plan was approved by the board uh, in 2017 and site plan was approved by the DRC uh, in 2018. Development agreement was approved by, by the board in 2019. There are some minor remaining issues. Uh, there uh, is about the future maintenance issues on pedestrian bridge and stormwater pond. Also, there are some cracks and some uh, uh, cleaning issues that was done uh, during the construction, so that uh, repair is uh, necessary. And missing signs, road marking issues are there, and the street lights need to be added. Minor adjustment of sidewalks and road construction uh, need to be done. Uh, so uh, on July 14, 2020, the Planning and Zoning Commission voted 5 to 0 to recommend approval with the two conditions. Uh, one, all remaining uh, punctually style tents related to the subdivision and the infrastructure shall be completed to the city's satisfaction uh, prior to the final plan uh, being executed by city staff. Two, the maintenance agreement as shown in attachment six in your uh, documents uh, and packet 
And the encouragement agreement as shown in attachment seven shall be executed and filed in the land, uh, land courts uh, with the final plan. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kim. All right, is the applicant here? If you would come forward, is there, just want to give you all a chance to say anything you might want to say about this. Well, uh, I'm Jackson Wallace. I'm the representative of the development company. If there's a technical question, I'll let the engineer handle it. Okay. Um, I really don't have anything. I just wanted to take a minute. Um, I want to thank y'all. This has been a this has been a long long project. We're very glad to see the end of it. I think it turned out great. And uh, just wanted to say thank you to the Board of Aldermen, Vice Mayor, Mayor Yu, uh, specifically Alderman Walker. Uh, you're not here tonight, but I understand. And um, you know we there's a lot of bad stuff going on these days. I want to tell you one good thing. Your staff. Maybe. This wouldn't have gotten done without them. They've all done a great job. And I couldn't name every one of them's names. I'm afraid if I do that, I'll miss somebody. But I do just want to say special thanks to them because it's, um, you know, it's been a challenge, but I think you guys have probably seen the product. It has turned out great. Right. So that's all I've got. Well, we always appreciate compliments to the staff, and, and thank you so much. You have brought a, a, a massive development to our uh, city, and I realized that it was a large development for you, and it certainly was for us too. So I'm glad it has turned out as it has. So thank you so much. All right, do I have any board members with any questions? Alderman Carver. No, ma'am. Okay, Alderman Pistron. No, ma'am. Alderman Walker. No, ma'am. And other than to say uh, thank you, I'm I'm happy for everybody that this project is. Uh, uh, nearing final completion and that we'll uh, approve this tonight and, and move forward. So with that, Mayor, I move uh, for final approval with the conditions as listed in the packet. Okay, I have a motion from Alderman Walker for approval with the conditions as listed in the packet. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Alderman Sistron. All right, we will continue down the line. Um, Alderman Beatty. No, Mayor, thank you. All right, Vice Mayor Perkins. No, Ma'am, Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Zola. No, Mayor. All right, thank you. Without any further discussion, then, if you would please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Fisher. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Bates. Yay. Yay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. All right, it is unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We appreciate y'all being in town. All right. All right. Uh, second item is consideration of a final plat for 20-02, request for a final plat approval for subdividing and reconfiguring two lots that are combined of 0.69 acres into two lots at 400 and 402 North Jackson Street in a TN-E zone with a parcel number, two parcel numbers that are long. So, um, all right. So, uh, Mr. Dr. Kim? Yes. Uh the applicant is requesting a subdivision with the reconfiguration of 0.69 acre into two lots. Uh, this has been reviewed under the previous code, and the board uh, Alderman approved the preliminary on January 21st, 2020, and the DRC approved the infrastructure plan on May 30th, 2020. This is the proposed final plan. Uh, this is a little bit magnified uh, pictures that shows the utility easements and uh, egress, ingress, ingress easements and setbacks and everything is uh, illustrated here. The remaining issues, uh, most, most of the issues have been addressed. ADA access and sidewalk issues need to be addressed, uh, but, uh, it seems minor. And uh, uh, on January 14, 2020, the Planning and Zoning Commission voted 520 to recommend the approval uh, with the two conditions. Uh, one, no temporary or uh, permanent certificate of occupancy shall be issued uh, for any structure on either lot uh, before all infrastructure, infrastructure is completed uh, to the satisfaction of all city departments. Two, the surety for all remaining required documents shall remain in effect until the city has inspected and approved. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Is the applicant here? If you would, please. Thank you so much. Anything you'd like to add to this? Hi, my name is Josh Davis from Bill Shaper. I'm the 
Okay, Mr. Davis, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. So we will go through and see if there are any questions. If there are, we'll, we'll get you up here to answer them. All right, thank you. Alderman Carver, any questions about this project? No, ma'am. All right, Alderman Sistrom? Mm -hmm. All right, Alderman Walker? Yes, ma'am. It's uh, not really a question, Mr. Kim. Could you, Dr. Kim, could you put the uh, the uh, the plan of the plat up, please? Yes. Y yes, sir. I, th I think the only thing I don't know that it needs to be a condition, but I couldn't see it when I was reviewing it in my packet. I think it would be appropriate to, to label both uh, Montgomery and Crite Street on the on the final plat, even though they're not building those roads. Um, I, I think having those, especially because the, the drawing changes, uh, I think orientation at, at some point in there, having those labeled unless they're on there already and I miss them, I think that would be appropriate moving forward just so it's, it's very clear uh, which road those are, this lot is adjacent to. It looks to me that Montgomery's uh, that is oriented correctly, but having added that uh, into the drawing, I think would be appropriate. Uh, with that, Mayor, I, I would move approval. All right. With that, um, Dr. Kim, I'm assuming you, there will be no problem in, in making that uh, distinction on there. No, not uh, not a problem. I I think Christ Street is uh, listed there. I'm not quite seeing there, but uh, we will add the uh, Montgomery. Uh, uh, actually, it's a Jackson Street. Okay, thank you. I agree with Alderman Walker. I was supposed to yeah, correct, that Jackson, that's right. understood the orientation. So, all right. So, I have a motion from Alderman Walker. Do I have a second? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Alderman Beatty. I have a second from Alderman Beatty. All right, we will continue on on down the line then. Uh, Alderman Beatty, any comments? What's being planned for this site? Can you give us any any information about what the plans are for the for the site? It is not. If you would, we just need the microphone, so that'll be helpful. If you would answer again, please. How many? How many units are brought? Do you know? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Right, Perkins. Mayor, just very briefly. Now, this is the the property uh, that uh, the site that sit right there at the top of Christ on Jackson, right across from Calvary Church. Is that the exact property, Mayor? Yes, sir. It is. Yeah, Mayor, I, you know, I'm going to vote against this, and I'm just going to say I, I see this site every day. I think there's a lot of history that the city had to get involved early, and I don't like how this, this site, it seems like it has a, such a, a downward runoff, and I'm not no expert, no engineer, no landscape architect here, but but when it rains, I don't know how that water's going to flow. It just, it sits, this, this site sits right here at the top of Jackson Street in front of Calvary, and it and it's right at the top of the hill, and I don't know how we get a major rain event, how the, the water is going to be, and hopefully we won't, if we get approved tonight, we won't be visiting this site again in the future. The only reason I mention this is this, this is something that Alton Walker normally addresses. Now, this is field of expertise, but I see this property every single day, and I know the history of the city had to kind of intervene in on this site earlier in the process because of some governmental concerns and you know and it may work out mayor but just you know I, i'm just not comfortable with approving this but you know i'm not an expert in this particular field but i just don't like the layout i don't know how the, the runoff is going to be contained it, it's just at a very high elevation for engineers it may say it's okay but i'm still not comfortable with but this all mayor i yield all right thank you vice mayor uh all move on no comments, Mayor. Thank you. Alderman hey, yeah, Bay, certainly. Um, will this be subject to our, our new stormwater mitigation? Yeah. Under your mitigation? Yeah. What about architectural review? Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Um, Any reason it wouldn't be? No, but I'll let Dr. Kim answer that. Oh, I'm sorry. Dr. Kim, oh, yeah. yes. is, is, will it be subject to the architectural review? Um. They haven't actually applied for the uh, building permit because uh, su uh, this uh, subdivision needs to be approved first. So is that a yes? Yes, uh, but uh, when they apply for the building permit, we it need to go through the architectural uh, design uh, review. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Um, Vice Mayor Perkins, 
you think I saw I already I'm sorry, that was a we've already gone through everybody, haven't you? You stopped me and, and brought me back. I apologize. Okay, so we so, have so, a motion. So, so may you say it, it is gone through the architectural review? No, it, it will it will go through the architectural review. You know, it it would seem like it, you know, and again I wanna be very brief, Mayor. I, I didn't mean to get into this tonight, but it's I would think that it was, should have gone to it before it got to us. Uh, but nevertheless, let's go ahead, Mayor. No problem. Yes, yeah, so this is this is just a final plat. Yes, ma'am. So, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. If you would please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Sistrom. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Bay. Yay. I say a Nay. Alderman Barnes. Nay. All right, by a vote of five to one, motion carries. Thank you, everyone. All right, next we have a claim socket. Do I have Move approval. I have a motion from Alderman Carver for a claim socket. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Sistrunk. Is there any discussion? Uh, Alderman Carver. No, ma'am. Alderman Sistrunk. No, ma'am. Alderman Walker. No, ma'am. Alderman Bates. No, Mayor. Uh, no, no questions. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Bowen. No, Mayor. If you would please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Bates. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Bates. 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 Yay. Alderman and that concludes the uh, regular agenda for this recess meeting of July the 21st. Uh, we have an opportunity to go into or close the term of session to determine need for an executive session. Do I have a motion to do so? Move, move. I'll go to the closed determination session. I have a second. 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 Alderman Sistrunk. Um, if you would please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Yay.
can you read it? Or uh, ask Mark Mayor to read it? We'll let him make the call. Let me get back in. All right, the board voted not to go, go into executive session, so we are currently in open session, and I believe we have a motion. Vice Mayor Perkins, would you like uh, Mr. Latimer to read a motion for you? Yeah, yeah that would be fine. Let him read the motion, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The Vice Mayor's motion is to move to accept the recommendations of Chief Ballard for a five-day suspension without pay, one-year probation, and six months with no take-home court privilege for Patrol Officer Valika Nash. Okay, uh, that is well, Vice well done. Well done, Mayor. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. I have a motion from Vice Mayor Perkins. Do I have a second? Second. Is that Alderman Carver? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. All right. I have a second from Alderman Carver. If you will please answer yay or nay. Yay. Yes, sir. All right. Yay. 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 All right, it is unanimous. Um, and that takes us to my little work announcement on the work session that we will be having on July the 31st at 10 a.m. That is Friday in, in preparation for our first meeting in August, um, which will be August the 4th. So the uh, board will be meeting in a work session on the second floor conference room. It is open to the public. And uh, we will be uh, putting that on Facebook Live, so it will be streaming. Uh, public and uh, press are invited to attend. So um, at that point in time, we now need a motion to adjourn. Okay. A motion to adjourn from Alderman Vaughn. Do I have a second? Sure. Second one from Alderman Beatty. Further discussion? Hearing none, if you will please answer yay or nay. Is this your Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Yay. Yeah. Yay. 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 All right, it's unanimous. We are in adjournment. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate all your attendance and your.